there were 18 United States Army Air Force airfields in Northam. During the Second World War, many American pilots were stationed in Norfolk. This became known as the Friendly Invasion. Britain? The Broads is a man-made system of lakes and rivers formed by digging for peat. We better be careful, the speed limit's four miles an hour. Here I am at the ancient bridge of Potter Hyam, looking out over one of the many rivers that make up the Broads. Potter Hyam is a haven for tourists. Here you can hire boats and explore the Broads in your own time. The Independent has labelled Norfolk as the best place on earth for eating crab. Norfolk is well known for its crab industry, and particularly for its chroma crabs. Norfolk has its own dialect, which is very difficult to imitate. I'm off to see Bob, the oldest resident of the village, to get the real thing. I left school, you see, at 14, and then I had to go in, I went, I volunteered to go into forestry. So I worked in there for four years, I did, and then I went to go in the RAF. And I went in there for three years, you see. The fair, Fair, stayed here for one week and that go. But during the war, that's not allowed to move. So that's parked out there. And anybody who's school age had to come to school over there with us, you see, because they weren't allowed to move off our greens. Well, we had them quite a while there. After the war, I came out and most of the while I was on British Rail because I had a big, big station up there at Mount Constable. You know, I mean, a great big, oh, and everybody, there was, Six, seven, eight hundred people, all the way, men that is, all the way around, going up there uh, to work up there, you see, on the railway. Because that was the biggest in Norfolk. That would, uh, see, there's trains going out from four, from four different directions. One went down to Yarmouth, one to Ma Norwich City, one went round to Cromer all around there, and the other one went to Peterborough, you see. So you can see, and all the other little stations, there's a lot bigger places, but they only they had one little one little business out of them. Whereas Mount Constable, you see, had all them four big lines, and those trains were going in there all the while. And I lived here, I should say, about 55 years. But all was in Bristol, and they were going to, in there at Bristol, and and so forth. You see, Bristol used to be well completely different because there's 
a lot more houses gone up and with all these fairs and all different things. See how the little villages, we, we are twice the size of the normal villages here, aren't we? And all them shops and even now we've got a good bread shop and a, and butchers and all that and the post office. You see, we're little, most uh, villages around in Norway, they got the post office closed up, you see, they are closed up. But yeah. we aren't. We got a little girl next door. She's about, about seven, I suppose. And you'll hear her talk to you perhaps when you go up, but there's no good looking about like that there. You gotta look up at that tree because she's in the top of the tree. <laughs> so we got strange people in Bristol, aren't they? <laughs> see? No, no, you talk, I just, well, he's a strange old man, but they are all strange, you see, and not just me. Elm Hill is one of the most famous places in Norwich, and with good reason. In appearance, it looks almost exactly the same as it did after it was rebuilt due to the fire of Norwich in 1507. The Britain's Arms is one of the few buildings on Elm Hill that survived the fire of 1507, and it dates back to the early Tudor period. Elm Hill gets its name from the elm trees which once stood here. Sadly, they were killed by Dutch elm disease. Flint is widely used in Norfolk architecture. It makes an excellent building material as it is durable and readily available. This use of flint is particularly evident in the walls of houses along the coast and the county's churches, such as Binham Priory, which we can see here. After a good dinner, one can forgive anybody, even one's own relations. Oscar Wilde, the well-known Irish writer, visited Norfolk, staying at the Hotel de Paris in Cromer. And here, where he wrote his novel, A Woman of No Importance. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle probably used Cromer Hall as inspiration for Baskerville Hall. This is Roughton. Einstein stayed here for a week during World War II when fleeing from the Nazis. The feature of Norfolk is the large houses and estates that still survive. This is Barningham Hall, a Jacobean house which is still in private ownership. Holcomb Hall, the seat of the Earls of Leicester. Felbrigg Hall used to be owned by the Wyndham family and had one of the largest estates in Norfolk. Wolf 
Hilton Hall, home of the Walpole. Blickling Hall, a Jacobean house where Anne Boleyn was born. Jethro Tull was one of the group of agriculturalists that founded the Norfolk system of crop rotation in the late 17th century. This system introduced new crops into the country and also applied scientific concepts to farming in the region. King's Lynn was a major Hanseatic town in the Middle Ages and one of the main ports of England in the 14th century. Signs of the busy historic town abound with places such as the Customs House, built in 1683, and the medieval merchants' houses with their wine cellars. It's not hard to imagine the medieval merchants of King's Lynn in their houses eating their lunch. Medieval King's Lynn merited two markets. The Tuesday market and the Saturday market. Welcome to Cremer Lifeboat Station. Uh, there's been a lifeboat station here since 1923. This building is now about uh, 12 years old. And the lifeboat I'm standing on is a Tamar class, which is the RNLI's newest type of lifeboat. Has a crew of six. It's capable of 25 knots, which is just somewhere near 30 miles an hour, and can go, and is indeed required to be able to go, up to 100 miles out to sea. It weighs 32 tonnes. It's a very quick operation to get it launched into the sea. It only takes two or three minutes. And generally speaking, the crew are down here and ready to go within five or six minutes of their pagers going off. And they've all got these little pagers, which I will endeavour to show you. There it is, little pager there. And even it's got, even got a little screen which shows them not only that there's been a lifeboat call out, but whether it's the requirement for this lifeboat or for the inshore lifeboat, which is kept on the beach for obviously water skiers, beaches and swimmers and that sort of operation. So Cromer has a tremendous RNLI history and it's, I don't look too much to the history, although there is of course a fantastic history with Cox and Henry blog and all that, which everybody's heard of. Bacon and Market is held every Thursday throughout the year. The stalls extend over two sites. There are also auctions which start at 11am. Norwich Market has been around for over 900 years. After the First World War, it came into public ownership. The old stores were replaced with what you can see today in 2006. You can get almost anything in Norwich Market.
I am myself a Norfolk man and glory in being so. On September the 29th, 1758, Horatio, who would grow up to be Admiral Lord Nelson and win the Battle of Trafalgar, was born here in Burnham Thorpe. Horatio Nelson joined the Navy at the age of 12, becoming a captain at the age of 20. The village still remembers him, with the pub named in his honour, and flags from his ships flown in the church. Horatio Nelson's father, Edmund, was the rector of the parish of Burnham Thorpe for 46 years. Marshes, the home of the ornithologists of Norfolk. This combination of freshwater marsh, reed bed, and salt marsh is home to large numbers of different species and is very popular to bird watchers from all over the country. Great Yarmouth has two piers. The first, Wellington Pier, is now in use as a bowling alley. The second, the Britannia Pier, is one of the few piers in England to have a theatre. Roma Pier has been used in television series and films including In Love with Alma Cogan. It has a lifeboat station situated on the end. Every New Year's Day there was a 15-minute firework display. Sandringham is one of the favourite residences of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. It was bought and almost completely rebuilt in 1862 by the future King Edward VII. The house is built in a Jacobean style. The estate, fully open to the public since 1977, attracts many visitors each year. Although the gardens were landscaped in the 19th century, the veteran oak trees from the medieval park still remain. Norfolk has an unusual number of round tower churches. The majority are either Saxon or Norman. They are well suited to the local flint rubble as there is no need for large cut stone or ashlar for the corners. Here are the seals found along the North Norfolk coast. The main type of seal here are the grey seals.
There are many seaside resorts, such as Cromer, Great Yarmouth and Caister on Sea. Welcome to California, Norfolk. This is a popular site for tourists, as you can see. Norfolk's lack of rain and relatively pleasant climate leads to a booming tourist industry. The University of East Anglia, UEA, is found on the outskirts of Norwich. Building began in 1962 on the former Earlham Hall estate. Like many universities of that date, it integrates the student accommodation with the teaching blocks. The Sainsbury Centre was built in 1974-8 by Norman Foster to house the art collection donated by Sir Robert and Lady Sainsbury. The Roman town of Venta Isonorum replaced the earlier Iceni settlement. Much of the perimeter is marked by the surviving ramparts and sections of the Roman Wall. The site is now only occupied by a medieval church and lots of sheep. The first beach hut was built in the 1920s. They have gone from being a ramshackle collection of old sheds to being beach huts worth up to £65,000. Nothing fills a hole like a double-decker. On the 3rd of March 1988, a bus crashed through the road into an old chalk mine here on Earlham Road in Norwich. Well, at the time the, the bus went in the hole, I was visiting friends um, not far from here and uh, somebody came in and said, you've got to go home because there's a bus in a hole outside your house. So I ran back immediately, leaving my two children and my car at the house where I'd come from. And uh, when I saw this bus in the hole, it was an horrific sight. You, it was just something, it almost looked like something evil had happened. And just after I arrived, I saw the ground ripple from the corner to the entrance to, the, to my garden. Great Yarmouth is a coastal town situated at the mouth of the River Yare. It has been a seaside resort since 1760.
Here you can see Great Yarmouth's House of Wax, made famous for being considered the world's worst waxworks. Unfortunately, it's now closed due to the retirement of the owners. It used to be a major fishing port specialising in herring. However, by 1970 this industry was no more. The Church of St Nicholas is claimed to be the largest parish church in England. You might have thought that you have to be in South America to see ziggurats, but thanks to Denny's Lesden, we can see them here at UEA.